All right, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yeah, I hope you lot are doing well. I hope that. Check out my vintage Chelsea 70s FA Cup, or hold on, 70s Chelsea FA Cup tribute shirt with the Yokohama in blue. Super dope. How you all doing? You alright? <laughs> welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another daily news update video where I'll be keeping you guys informed about the transfer news going around the rags. But if you are new to the channel, I want to request that you do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you have not yet done so, please do click the subscribe button, the bell notifications icon, that's important. And why not like the video to help your brother out? I mean, even the Hyundai's in blue, it just looks so dope. Right, we got some stuff to talk about today. Chelsea have been linked with a very exciting and experienced and talented left back for what seems like I was going to say a reasonable price, but we'll get into that in a minute. A couple of updates on Gabby Goll and how maybe that would be more obtainable for someone like Chelsea than it would be West Ham, who are also chasing the Brazilian striker, but as their number one. And obviously it'd be a number two at Chelsea. And stuff on Michi Batshuayi's striker outgoings. But let's start on that. Right, Chelsea are obviously looking to bring in a striker, that's no secret, especially due to the fact how Olivier Giroud is probably on his way out. But where does that leave Michi Batshuayi? He might feel like, right, well, if you're bringing in the striker to be the absolute number two at Chelsea, I'm going to go, man, because I, I think Batshuayi has come out and said he's happy to be the number two at Chelsea, you know, coming on, helping the team when he can. I think he likes his life in London, but if he gets pushed down to the number three, that's not really fair if you consider a striker of his age profile and caliber i think he's like belgium's number two which are the number one ranked team in the world so he can't really be a number three striker at his age so he needs to get out of here even if that's just alone understandably frank lampard and co at chelsea probably know that Giroud's is on his way out regardless so they are telling clubs like aston villa who are heavily interested in taking on michi batshuayi this january that no, guys, you got to hold far and wait because we are absolutely not letting Michy Batshuayi go until we know for certain we've got another striker signing. All the best Chelsea sides throughout history have generally always had three strikers in the books, but they've never had less than two. So Giroud going for definite, they cannot afford to let Michy Batshuayi go as well until they secure the signature of another striker, whether that be Gabi Gol or whether that be Moussa Dembele or whoever else they start talking to within this general January transfer window. So there's that. So let's stay on strikers and let's talk about Barbosa, Gabby Goal, the Brazilian wonder kid. Well, he's not a kid, he's 23, but he scores loads and loads of goals. He's an Inter Milan player, but he's been playing away on loan at Flamengo, scoring loads, and I mean loads of goals, having a lovely time. His muscle memory and reflexes and whole being as a centre forward is scoring goals. At 23 years old, that sounds like a nice acquisition to have to put the pressure on young Tammy Abraham, right? Right. Now, I've already done a video on Barbosa, but yes, Chelsea had been linked with him before a couple of years ago. He's a renowned talent coming out of Brazil and loads of people have been keeping a good eye on him, but he's an Inter Milan player and he's been away on loan. Now, West Ham are really, really interested in this player and they might be able to tempt him as their centre forward as well as paying him a lot of money. West Ham have a lot of money and also he would get to come and live in London, which is a big alluring factor for some players around world football. So where does that leave Chelsea in terms of being in a tough spot or having the edge on securing his signature? Well, at first, obviously, if he goes to West Ham, he'll be the number one man. Wow, that rhymed. And my name's Jan. Ugh. Anyway, the striker himself will have to take into consideration certain factors of, oh, well, if I go to West Ham, I'll be the number one man. But also, West Ham Stadium isn't the best, not the greatest atmosphere. He'll probably be looking into a few of these factors when thinking about signing for a new club. Chelsea, quite a prestigious club, the only team in London with a European Cup. Generally, the best team in London. So if he thinks, mm, you know what, I'd rather go there, sit on the bench and put the pressure on Tammy Abraham and earn good money regardless and see how things go and maybe even play on the pitch at the same time as Tammy Abraham and the other elite Chelsea players. Tempting, huh? Also, you know, you might win medals at Chelsea. 
uh, not so much the case at West Ham. But what gives Chelsea the edge in a potential transfer in January really is how Antonio Conte, the Inter Milan coach, would probably be interested in a couple of Chelsea players. Whether it's Alonso as a left wing back, apparently he's still quite interested in Emerson, or indeed just Olivier Giroud, it does look like Chelsea might have some bartering tools to do business with Inter Milan that West Ham do not have. Remember, Inter Milan are in a title race and if Antonio Conte sees the ability to bring more players in to solidify his chances at winning the Scudetto in Italy, he'll tell his boardroom members or the board above him, yes, bring me in these players. He's often frustrated Conte that he feels like he's being hard done by, by, by his board yeah, that Juve, Chelsea, and now indeed into Milan. And I still think he probably fancies a player or two, but the thing is, they broke their transfer record for Conte twice. They're probably short on cash, but if they find a deal with Chelsea where they can bring in a player that Conte wants, like Olivier Giroud, but they just sell uh, Gabi Gola at a reduced price, well, who knows, that might make perfect sense for both Chelsea, Conte, Inter, Giroud, and Barbosa. So who knows, watch this space, but I'll of course keep you guys updated with all these stories, so make sure you swing by Football Therapy every single day. Right then, let's move on to the big story of today. It's been going around the papers, and when I say papers, I mean news websites outlets, that Chelsea are keen on Bayern Munich left-back David Alaba. Here's some statistical context for you. David Alaba is an Austrian defender, midfielder, very, very versatile. At one point, people were saying he's the best left back in the world. And we're talking about in a time of your Andy Robertson's coming up, a very, very, very talented left back, still only 27, so in his prime, he has 20 major trophies since joining Bayern in 2008. 20 major trophies, 20 honors. This guy is perfect for Chelsea because already, unlike Ben Chilwell, Unlike whoever else you want to bring into the mix, he wins trophies. That's what he's bred to do. He's like, yep, yeah, every year we win. I know what it takes to win. I know what it takes to see out a league title. I know what it takes to win a final in a cup or knockout competition. And he's not old, he's, but he's senior. So a 27-year-old brings seniority down that left-hand flank in the Chelsea side. Obviously, Chelsea need a left back. They've been playing Aspie over there. They've been rotating Emerson Alonso. Frank Lampard doesn't really know what he's doing at left back. Chelsea have obviously been heavily linked with Premier League proven player Ben Chilwell, who fits the profile of a Chelsea acquisition. But that would be at a rumoured £75 million. And again, as talented as Ben Chilwell is, he doesn't have this like winning mentality as David Alaba. And David, David Alaba is like a huge name. Like He's an elite Galactico level left back and the rumoured fee is 60 million pounds. Now already 60 million pounds instead of 75 for a player who's arguably seen as the best in the game suddenly seems like a much better deal and it's a huge high profile purchase. The thing is Alaba only has 18 months left on this contract hence the you know, club being willing to sell him. I guess he has been refusing to re-sign but 18 months, 60 million sounds like quite a lot for 18 months but it is a January signing so you kind of think of it as two years which is a lot really and it's a January signing so it's hard to pull them away and I mean if Chelsea pull that off and we play Bayern in January or February whatever it is you know scenes narrative all just waiting to happen. Alaba is a superb player he's a wonderfully dynamic left back he can get up and down he'll do exactly what Frank Lampard wants and he can play in midfield much like young Reese James. You can tell when they're dynamic, superb players because they're midfielders as well as fullbacks. Look at Trent Alexander-Arnold who is probably, I was going to say arguably, but almost definitely the best fullback in the Premier League at the moment. He used to be a midfielder coming through at Liverpool and got pushed out to fullback just to get into the team. When your fullback can play in midfield and the fullback position, they're a very versatile and technical footballer inherently like Reese James. Alexander Arnold and David Alaba. But like I said, Alaba's elite. He's used to winning and winning and winning loads of major trophies, loads of major honours. And for me, if it's genuine and G Chelsea can secure him for £60 million and this rumour's come from somewhere, that would be a great acquisition. And just signing him alone, for me, would make Chelsea's January transfer window a success. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Would you be happy with this signing? Would you go for someone else? I know a lot of people want the likes of Alex Tellez, but in terms of buying an experienced left back who's won it all, 
David Alaba sounds good to me. Get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts. Also, if you're yet to subscribe to Football Therapy, make sure that you do and like the video. If you've enjoyed today's content, go subscribe to my other channel. Link is in the top of the description. You can follow me also on social media. That's at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter at Football Yannick. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you do enjoy the football. Swing by Football Therapy every single day, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.